It's been said that the role of the father of the bride is threefold, namely to show up, pay up, and shut up. <laughs> but in the immortal words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't that. <laughs> Charge your glasses and settle in. Peach Hemingway. <laughs> <laughs> Weddings are great excuses for a party, and this evening I hope will be no exception. We've got quite an assembly here uh, an esteemed grandparent, um, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends. And even a handful of people that I actually recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny, Reed. <laughs> on behalf of uh, Jeff and Kat, I'd like to welcome you all for coming to celebrate their special day. I appreciate that some of you have traveled uh, a very long way. And on that note, it's customary to confer an award on the parties who travel the furthest. And there's a little twist to this tonight because generally uh, my partner, those aren't mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm next. Generally my partner, Megan, who hails from Sydney, Australia, wins that prize hand down, hands down. <laughs> Tonight she's been trumped by uh, one of the groomsmen, DJ. DJ, where? And his lovely wife, Michelle, who have traveled all the way from Perth. On the west coast, of course, of the island continent. and. Um, DJ, I wanted you to know that your prize is an extra serving of poutine over tonight's late night fight. Worth it. I particularly want to welcome Jeff into my family. Uh, happy. It's, it's a real pleasure to be able to officially call you my son-in-law. Yeah. All right. Um, those of you who know Jeff know that he's a touch shy, and he never did go through the convention of asking for my daughter's hand. But Jeff, just for the record, you had my blessing years ago. <laughs> I should tell you that several of Katie's friends were surprised to hear that Jeff and I hit it off. <laughs> and uh, I can recall a conversation with the master of co-master of ceremonies, Haley Cohen back here, that I actually had from atop Signal Hill in St. John's, Newfoundland, talking to her. She was also at that time in Newfoundland. And she said, what did you, th what do you think, Reed, of, of uh, Kat's new guy? And I said, I really like him. And she said, Reed, do you realize this man has never owned a suit? <laughs> He'll never be a banker or a lawyer. <laughs> Clearly not a soccer <laughs> And I said, you remember this conversation? Yeah, we did. <laughs> and I said, well, that's true, Haley, but let's look at what he is. Uh, first, I sense that he's crazy about my daughter. And I'd submit to you that that is almost any father's base case in measuring a future son-in-law. <laughs> And secondly, he was clearly raised by caring and committed parents who in turn were part of strong extended families. So good stock 
<laughs> Jeff's grandmother, Norma, who is seated at my table on my right, is 90 years young. Yeah. And fine fiddle and the mother of five children, all of whom are present here tonight. Oh, yeah. Norma and her husband Laverne are hugely respected in these parts. After World War II, Laverne became the circuit doctor for communities from Squamish all the way to Lillooet. These were services for which he was awarded the Order of Canada. Jeff's parents. Jeff's parents, Janet and Paul, will celebrate their 34th wedding anniversary a week Saturday. And I gotta tell you, they still hold hands and act like lovers. And if that's Jeff's role for marriage and, and family, uh, I second that emotion. <laughs> Whenever I've visited their home in Squamish, it's always been full of family and, and, and mirth and, and music. And uh, I know Megan's son, Lewis, still talks to this day about the very warm welcome that he got from the Kindred clan when he arrived in Canada in 2011 as a at the tender age of, of 18, to work a season at Whistler. They were just amazingly hospitable. Now, as the proud father of the bride, uh, I'd like to turn to my daughter, Catherine, who hit her out of the park today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. She goes by a number of nicknames. Cat is the current most popular, but she's been Katie. No way. And Kathy. I call her Katie. Yeah. yeah. And to me, Pookins. Oh, yeah. Pookins. And a number of her friends still call her, and still Pookins. still call her Pookins. 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 According to Dr. Apgar, and she's evolved into a woman who is spirited, adventurous, independent, and loyal. She's also very green. When she was just 12, she painstakingly cut out letters to create a hanging banner across the span of our kitchen, which read, please recycle. <laughs> I don't want to give you the impression that she's flawless. Uh, <laughs> she can occasionally, occasionally be a tad impatient. Uh, she does not, not suffer fools gladly. And thank you. That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> That's water, Reed. Ooh. That's water. <laughs> Uh, and often finds authority figures so annoying. <laughs> and also at times she can be a bit mischievous. Uh, like back when she was 18, for example. I was lying in bed reading my morning paper one weekend when she bolted into the room, tossed a scrap of paper on the bed and just as quickly disappeared. I picked it up and slowly unfolded it. And this traffic citation, <laughs> compliments of the Ontario Provincial Police, came into focus. It was a speeding ticket for traveling 178 kilometers <laughs> in a 90 zone. Oh.
senior presence, that's 115 miles in a 55, <laughs> twice the legal limit. <laughs> when I confronted her, she offered two excuses. And this was on Highway 115, just outside of Peterborough, by the way. She's on her way to Toronto. She offered two excuses. Well, that one. <laughs> you, you're right. You, and and I think Jenna was. Also in the car. I think I was waiting on the other end. But she said that one of the two of you, this is the reason for speeding, had a, a was late for a dental appointment. The second reason, she said, Dad, in that new sports suit you bought, you just had no concept of speed. <laughs> it's sneaky fast. <laughs> Yeah. I might have believed that at 130, 140 yeah. in the new car. <laughs> but it seems to me that everybody experiences that same sense of white knuckle velocity at 180. <laughs> so I concluded this was a simple example of a kid trying to top end their parents' new car. <laughs> the girl has attitude. Which brings me back to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, as your new father-in-law, I'd like to give you some parting advice with respect to marriage. Uh, we all know you're supremely healthy and fit, but there's one muscle, Jefe, that you may not be working on enough. And strangely enough, your neck muscle. And what I'm going to do, suggest to you is you have to start to practice this exercise. Who wrote this? <laughs> In closing, a great sage once said, love does not consist of gazing at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction. I think it's the best advice I can give Kat and Jeff, especially when there's no one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to, I was going to say charge your glasses, but I think we're missing champagne flutes, so if you'd like, you could pour your water on it, onto the grass. It's been dry over here. <laughs> recharge some hey, funny, hey, champagne, funny. or you could simply use it. And here, I'll just pass them I don't know that that's going here. So, Thank you. Please. Oh, it's not Thank I'd ask, you, I'd ask you all to rise and a toast. <laughs> <laughs>